Might need to turn another light on. Go ahead. Welcome back to Paranormal, the new normal. I'm your host, Jeremy, as always, trying to make the world seem more, more normal. Are we going to do that today? Well, yeah, kind of. I mean, the subject we're talking about today is as normal as it gets in this show. But you may ask, well, what's the topic today? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. Calm the fuck down. But we are back with another one-on-one -on -one bracket. You know how much I love doing these guys. You know it brings me joy to do these a lot. It's just different from the normal interview. And this one is one that we haven't even done as a group yet. So this is a real virgin experience for me, for my guests, for everybody. It's going to be fun. And no, it's not what's titled on the live right now because I totally fucked that up myself. But anyway, the bracket that's going to actually be getting done is the top 40 alien TV shows. So the top 40 TV shows about aliens, basically. And I got to say, I'm looking forward to this one. I can't wait to do it as a group someday either with like six other people, but we'll get there eventually. I got a lot of other ones to go through first. As you all know, you all have heard the schedule by now. It's insane. But let me introduce my guests because that's what we're here for. My guest today, you've seen him before on my show, I think, in some aspect or other. Actually, yeah, he did. He was on my show for an episode. Yeah, we did that. So... Jeremiah Dorf is back from the What If They're Wrong podcast. What's going hey, on? Hey, how's buddy? it going? No, oh, it's going. Thanks for having me on. Oh, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And I I really got actually, being the conspiracy guy you are, I got to introduce you to my other, my co-host, my other show. I really do. Because, well, let me ask you this before we get started. What do you think of the birds aren't real conspiracy? Um... I don't believe it. Only because I've seen the inside of birds. Uh, my cats have drugged birds to the house before. And now do I think there might be some robotic birds? There might be. Um, just like I think there's robotic insects that are used to do surveillance or whatever the heck they want to do with them. Because they have the technology to make these microchips that are the size of insects and use that for whatever they need to do. So who's to say they don't have some fake birds out there that are doing, you know, eye surveillance or sky surveillance, I should say. All right. I mean, the way you describe it makes it seem logical. When people say that, no, no bird is real in this whole <laughs> planet. It's like, yeah. I'm like, birds have been around since before cameras were a thing. So, I mean, people have written poems and there's myths about famous ancient birds and whatnot. Like, come on now. Like, birds have been around forever. What, you think Zeus was making little bird androids in his freaking uh, <laughs> Olympus workshop besides the one that helped, besides the one Al that helped out uh, the guy in Clash of the Titans? Like, come on. Like, Jesus. Now, I will say on a side note, I am not really a big fan of birds. I don't really like them, <laughs> but, they you know, I understand. I understand their, um, you know, role in the ecosystem. Oh, they play many important roles. And I mean, I have, we have fucking chicken. So, I mean, birds are, they don't, they don't birds don't bother me. I, I have family like that where bird, they can't be around birds because they have the whole fear of the bird swooping into the head thing because it happened. <laughs> but I mean, I just. I, I love I like birds. Like I'm not gonna say I love them because I mean, yeah, looking at penguins is cool. It's fucking shit. But I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna like stop and look at a pigeon or some shit for like an hour. Like it's that's a pigeon. It, they live. They I hear they taste good. I don't know. I haven't had one, but still, I mean, I like birds. They provide good food for us, and they are very important to the ecosystem. And they're fun to watch. I mean, sometimes watching an eagle or hawk freaking just fly around the air is awesome. I don't know why it just is. It's like majestic as hell. Now, people might think I'm weird, but I like watching squirrels. <laughs> if there's just, anything that's a fucking robot, it's a damn squirrel. It's a damn squirrel. <laughs> I don't know why. I just enjoy watching squirrels. I I try to think what they're thinking. And, um, you know, I just, I don't know, something about squirrels. I would never no. have one as a pet or anything, but okay. I've had people that have had, had them as pets. <laughs> but, yeah, it's. It's, I mean, it's cute. I wouldn't mind having one, but I just, yeah, I've had no small animal pets in my life. I'm good. I don't need anymore. I got two big <laughs> dogs, and my two big dogs would kill a small animal pet. So, yeah. But let's get this bracket going on. As I said before, folks, Jeremiah is here to do the top 40 alien TV shows bracket. Yes, I fucked up the title. And this <laughs> list came, this list came from Ranker. So, 
I did not make this list. I did not make these rankings. This was all done by ranker or by people like you and me who just voted it up or down. So you can disagree with them as much as you want. It's even more fun if you do. So your first matchup, and I cannot say I've ever watched either of these shows, so no opinion for me on these, but it's number 38, Visitors, which is an HBO Max show, versus number 18, Stargate Atlantis, which is a sci-fi show. I'm going to have to go Stargate Atlantis. Um, I've always loved Stargate and the lore behind it. And um, the movie I've watched, I can't even tell you how many times. And I don't know if I saw Stargate Atlantis, but I saw Stargate SG-1, some episodes of that. That's on here somewhere. (laughs) Trust me. um, So, yeah, I'm going to have to go with that. And I haven't seen the other show, so I can't really say I feel like Visitors is a new show, and that's also why it's ranked so low, because new shows and new movies in these rankings, I find, are always ranked the lowest because people haven't had a chance to watch them. So, well, not always. Like in this next one, (laughs) it's number 37, Ben 10, Ultimate Alien from Cartoon Network, versus number 17, Star Trek Voyager, which was originally on UPN. Oh, 100% Star Trek Voyager. I... I'm not a Trekkie, but I love Star Trek um, way more than Star Wars. And I know people will hate me for that. But, I, <laughs> but yeah, Star Trek all the way for me. I love the whole whole thing. <laughs> See, I am nowhere near a Trekkie. I love Star Trek, especially the new movies. I've always wanted to go back and watch all the original, all the different series, like in order and like basically delve into it all but just never had the chance because who the fuck has that many hours to do that <laughs> but, <laughs> i think it's one of those things where you either do it when you're a kid or you do it when you're when they're wrong and you're just as long as you keep up with it you're fine but it's like wrestling you can't go back and watch 30 years of wrestling and actually have time to do that so yeah i remember yeah. watching um uh what was it the next generation with sean luke picard oh yeah yeah, I, mean, I, I used to watch that all the time when I was growing up. <laughs> it was before my time. It was a little before my time. I I, I remember seeing it on TV, but I was a little, really young kid and just didn't interest me yet. I wasn't even in Star Wars yet at that point. So they just, if it wasn't a cartoon, I wasn't watching it. But I mean, Star Trek's going to face Stargate in the n- next round. Oh, that's going to be interesting. But <laughs> number 36 is the first one in the next matchup, and it's Alien Worlds which is a Netflix show, versus number 16, The Outer Limits, which is a Showtime show. Um, ooh, that's interesting. I think I have seen Alien Worlds um, on Netflix. I think it was kind of like a, how they would think other planets would be and did re- recreations of yeah, you know, I think how it's it would be on other planets. It's one of those like what-if documentaries. And I thought it was pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. So I'll have to give it that. I'll have to go with that. Yeah, yeah I never watched Outer Limit, so I, I know, I know what it is. I just never watched Outer Limit yet. It's on the long list of shows to watch. But hey, this next matchup to see what Alien World is going to face actually has a show I do currently watch, and it's number thirty-five, Solar Opposites, a Hulu show, a spinoff of Rick and Morty. Versus number 15, Invasion, an Apple TV show. Oh, wait. I think I've seen Invasion. If I can recall. Hmm. I haven't seen the other one, though, yet. So I don't really know which one to pick. (laughs) I mean, personally, it's okay. It, when we do this as a group, I will go for Solar Opposite so hard when it would be funny. That is the funniest fucking cartoon ever. <laughs> what's They're that, really, uh, Solar what's Opposite that cartoon is, with the, uh, all the conspiracy stuff? Where it's you know, like a cartoon and in the first episode, she goes down like an elevator into this area where all the conspiracies uh, are. And I forget what it's uh, called. I, I'm not sure. I, off the top of my head, I don't know that one, but Oh, Final Space, maybe? I haven't watched it yet, but it might be Final Space. 
but I'm not sure, but that was fun. <laughs> but yeah, I'll go with your show because I don't I don't know either of them really. I mean, Solar Opposites does deserve to go on because it's an amazing fucking show. They the aliens that are the main characters of this show that are living on Earth literally have the the two kids literally have a like dollhouse built into their wall, but it's all shrunken down humans that they put into the wall. And the wall has its own storyline within the show, which the best part of the show is the storyline about the humans trying to survive the wall. Like wars oh, yeah. and shit. Like it's epic. It's epically hilarious. But <laughs> it's, it's just oh, I love that show. But so Solar Opposites will face alien worlds. And, ooh, and a Hulu versus Netflix battle in that next round. I like that. <laughs> but this next matchup is number 34, Top Secret UFO Projects Declassified, a Netflix documentary series, versus number 14, Rick and Morty from Adult Swim. So I'll probably get hate for this, but I'll have to go UFO Declassified because my specialty is alien abductions and alien activity. So uh, I have to lean that way because it's what I'm into. It's my passion as of late. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't blame you. I wish I could watch a lot more documentaries about that type of stuff than I do. But for these brackets, I may have to eventually. So we'll see. But to see what that's going to face, it's either 33 UFO, a Paramount Plus show, or number 13, Bab Babylon 5, originally on P10. Never heard that channel even, but originally on P10. <laughs> um, I honestly haven't seen either of them, but I've heard of Babylon 5 where I have not heard of the other show. So I'll have to go Babylon 5. <laughs> All right. I mean, Babylon 5 is a sci-fi classic from everything I've heard. It's I never had a chance to actually check it out yet, but I've heard it's amazing. The people I know are into it are just like Trekkies and Star Wars fans. They're really into it. Really into it. But it's like that and, uh Firefly Firefly show that like got canceled. Everyone was pissed off and never saw that either. I always say I should, but I don't know. I just But this next matchup is actually I, I like this next matchup. It's a CW matchup. Ooh. It's number it's number thirty two, Supergirl. Versus number 12, Roswell, the original 90s series of a reboot. 100% um, Roswell. Uh, UFOs, Roswell, right up my alley. So I'll have to go there. I and never watched the original. And I I'll get, the reboot. I'll get a lot of heat for this, too. I know I'm different than a lot of people, but... Um, I'm not a fan of DC Comics. I don't like their characters. I think they're cheesy, and I'm a Marvel person. <laughs> so okay, 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 okay. You said that. Okay, I, I can, I can love that. <laughs> I can love, I can love and fucking respect that you're a Marvel person. But, but I do like Marvel, Batman. I do like Batman. Who doesn't? But I mean, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Marvel, I'm a Marvel person over D. I love DC, but Mar I'm definitely Marvel over DC. If both are in the theaters at the same time, I'm seeing Marvel first. I don't give a shit. But yeah, I'm. Oh, okay. Rare circumstances. But I did like um, happen, but... I did like Aquaman. That was a good movie. Oh, that was fucking amazing. And David, ask all your questions, buddy. I don't know what they are. And apparently Outer Limits got love. And Firefly does still have comic books. I've seen that. I just wouldn't buy them because I'm not a fan of the show enough to ever do that. And Roswell got some love. And oh, David said Supergirl should have won. I agree with you, David. But that's me. And the original 90s Roswell just looked the reboot was pretty good, actually, but better graphic, better imaging in the reboot, of course. But that means Roswell's going to face one of these two shows, and if one of these doesn't win, I might be a very pissed off individual, just saying. <laughs> but it's number 31, The War of the Worlds from AMC Plus, versus number 11, Futurama, the classic Fox cartoon. Uh, Futurama, 100%. <laughs> thank God, I thank love you that God. show. <laughs> How can, how can anybody that's into this stuff not love that show? It's so scientifically genius. And I don't know if the new ones are out yet, but I definitely need to see them uh, yes, when I get a the chance. First, the first season is over on Hulu. Oh, yeah. I'll have to check it out because, yeah, I love Bender. He's hilarious. <laughs> I got to say the new season was – it was cool. They finished – they finally continued some storylines from, like, the first few seasons, but the new season wasn't – 
it's not the original Futurama. Even when they brought it back the second time, it still wasn't the original Futurama. You're never going to get that original early 2000s magic. So here's and, an interesting uh, here's right. an interesting fact about Fu Futurama too, because I'm a video game collector on, as well. Um, <laughs> the X the Xbox version of Futurama has a um, lost episode or like a hidden episode that's on the disc. So the game is expensive, and that's the main reason why is because not just Futurama game, but they have that like episode on the disc that was never like aired or something like that. I mean, that game alone is very hard to find in any form because it just it's like it never existed almost. And David says Supergirl can take on anything; she's invincible. She can't take on dark box; she can't get out of. It. So, ah, uh, you put her in a dark <laughs> box with, with Kryptonite, and she ain't getting out of shit. Trust me, she has to have friends for that. I've seen it. But can she and, beat? Um, can she beat Superman though? She has in the comics when she had to, when he has become Dark Side's puppet for a little bit. But and don't worry, Star Trek the original is definitely on this at some point. All the Star <laughs> Trek cards and the higher ranking side, I believe. And apparently not a fan of either Futurama or the other one. Yeah, I never even heard the other one on the other one that's on uh, AMC Plus. I don't have. I have it. I had AMC Plus, but I don't remember where the worlds ever being on there. But whatever. I liked War of the Worlds the movie. Yeah, it was okay. I can't say I loved it, but it was okay. It was okay. The Tom Cruise one's not bad. The original is just, oh my God, horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's corny. <laughs> but, yeah. The next matchup, though, is number 30, Marvel's Secret Invasion from Disney+, Plus, which I was amazed was on this ranking list so soon, but versus number 10, Colony, a sci-fi show. Oh, bro. Colony. I love that show. <laughs> um, I never got to finish it. I got to go back and finish it. But, man, Colony was so freaking good. I remember getting sucked into that one. I haven't seen Colony, but, I mean, it's Marvel. I would work for Marvel no matter what. Unless Colony really is just that incredible and I need to watch it. But we'll see. I'll go put that in the list. But the final matchup on this side of round one is number 29. Final Space, the TBS cartoon, which I have not watched yet. I want to watch it because it looks hilarious, but haven't had a chance to watch that one. Versus number nine, The Neighbors, an ABC sitcom from the late 2000s. Uh, I've honestly never seen either of them, but I have heard of The Neighbors. The Neighbors. I'm trying to think what that was hilarious. about. It was about this alien family that moved into a su into the suburbs next to this regular family, and it's just basically about their interactions when they find because they find out they're aliens pretty fast, and they oh, try okay. to help them, they try to they try to help them keep it secret from everybody else. Yeah, I'll have to go with that one then. <laughs> it, it it's hilarious. The, the actor the actors who play the fathers, which the human father is a very famous actor. I can't remember his name, but he's very sitcom famous. <laughs> um, both the fathers are hilarious. I love the, I love that show. It ended way too soon, but it was funny. What was that? Um, the Last Man on Earth. I thought the first season was funny. Oh, The Last Man on Earth was hilarious. I watched all that. I loved it. <laughs> Freaking oh, it's what's his name? I not Jason Bateman. Um, I can't remember his name right now, but he's freaking hilarious. But this next matchup should be easy, I think, for anybody. But we'll see. And now you're on the other side round one, by the way. It's number 28, Steven Universe Future, a Cartoon Network show, or number nine, Doctor Who, the classic BBC show that has been on for 50 plus years. <laughs> um, I feel like you have to go Doctor Who. I don't see how anybody could in unless they are like a diehard Steven Universe fan. But <laughs> but there uh, there's probably someone out there who is, but <laughs> possibly. I oh actually okay. That's why. I, okay, I'm trying to figure out why I had two number nines, and I'm like, oh yeah, because the neighbors wasn't even on this originally. I think I added that one because I had to. It was classic. I'm like, how's he not on the show? But to see who's going to face Doctor Who, this matchup is actually a streaming service battle, and it's kind of interesting. It's number 27, Star Wars: The Bad Batch, a Disney Plus animated series, versus number eight, Lost in Space, the 2018 Netflix version. 
I'm going to get hate for this, but I'll go Lost in Space. I'm not even wasting my damn breath. Like, uh, I know, uh, I don't want to say it because I'll be like the villain, but like, I'm just not a huge Star Wars person. Like, they're okay, but I'm not just, I don't know. The expanded universe now that Dave Filoni is doing it is the most amazing thing ever. I love Star Wars since I was a kid, but the newer stuff is making it so much better. Even people who aren't fans of it, it should make you fans of it because it's just so different than the movies. Like, I do want to see the Solo TV show and all that stuff. Or was it Solo? No, The Mandalorian. Oh, The Mandalorian is fucking incredible. Yeah, I haven't got to that, but I I need to watch that. Just telling you, you watch that, you're gonna be opening yourself up to like five other shows too that came after that. So just <laughs> just telling you, it's gonna it's gonna make you want to watch all of it. But that means Doctor Who will face Lost in Space in the next round, and Doctor Who getting some more love in the comments, of course, because it's the, it's the Doctor. There's been 16, 17 of them now for a reason, but and the books are kind of are incredible too. But that's gonna bring us actually to a ooh a Star Trek face down. It's number 26, Star Trek Discovery, a Paramount Plus original, versus number seven, Star Trek The Next Generation from multiple, multiple channels over time. Um, Next Generation, 100%. <laughs> I grew up watching that, and I just fell in love with it. And, yeah, it's on the top of my list of favorite shows all time. <laughs> All right, well, it's going to be facing in the next round, either number 25, Another Life, a Netflix series, or number six, Battlestar Galactica, the 78 series on ABC. Ooh. Well, I tried to watch Another Life, and I didn't really like it. So I'll go with Battlestar Galactica. Which... (laughs) This might get some heat when this actually goes to podcast form for this next matchup, but it's going to be Star Trek TNG versus Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> God, if I was actually a fan of either of those shows, really, it'd be probably for me, but I'm not. There needs to be more Star Wars shows, and it's insane. But next matchup is number 24, Taken, a sci fi original series, versus number five, Star Trek. The original series, the NBC classic. Uh, that's like making me choose my left or right hand. Um, is it taken the Spielberg one? I think so. I'm not 100% on that. Because I love that one. But I have to go original Star Trek. It's just so iconic. And I mean, William Shatner. <laughs> okay. Fuck, oh, man. Fucking Leonard Nimoy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I, Leonard I Nimoy, yeah. I, that's actually the one Star Trek show I had started watching, and I watched most of it. I still got a few episodes left, but I love the fucking cartoon from the original series. It was amazing. But the next matchup to see what's going to face that is either number 23, Defiance, a sci-fi series, versus number four, Stargate SG-1, a Showtime series. So... I'm going to go Stargate SG-1, but I did like playing Defiance and the show tying into the game. That was fun. I never actually played the game, but I watched the shit out of the show, and I loved the show. The game looks fun. I just wasn't a computer gamer. Yeah, so the game was fun, and I liked how it tied into the show and all, but I have to go Stargate just because I love Stargate and the, the lore behind it and everything, so... I'll go that way. And Stargate's getting some love too in the comments. So there you go. People are yep, she knows what's you. up. <laughs> <laughs> and this next matchup I fucking hate. Because it's two shows I freaking love. But it's number 22, The Orville, a, a Fox series and a Hulu series, versus Fallen Skies, a TNT series from the early 2010s. Um, I'm gonna go Falling Skies just because I love alien stuff, and it was a pretty cool concept. Have you not seen the Orville? 
Uh, I've not got to that yet. No. Oh my god! It's Star is Trek. Orville, is it? It's, it's like the pre-Star Trek, right? It's it, it's not technically Star Trek at all, but it's basically oh. Star Trek. It's basically Star Trek done by Seth MacFarlane. Uh, yeah, I'll so, have to check it out. I haven't. I haven't got the, to it. The original couple seasons that were on Fox are more humorous, but when Hulu picked it up, it became more serious, and they started touching on like political issues and stuff. So it's, but all the seasons are freaking amazing. I, Seth MacFarlane's amazing on it. It's the reason he stopped working on Family Guy. Oh wow! So it's he he loves it. He puts a lot. It's his favorite thing he does. But Falling Skies is going to be facing either number twenty one Picard, the Paramount Plus original series. Or number two, The Expanse, a sci-fi Amazon Prime original series. Um, I'm gonna have to say Expanse. Mm. For a next generation kid, I'm surprised Picard's not getting that win. Yeah, I just I uh, never really got into it. I was, I don't know. <laughs> mm. I want to get into it, but I gotta watch fucking Next Generation first. You got two matchups left in round one. And it's either for this one, number 20, Star Trek Enterprise, a UPN original series, or number one, the number one ranked show on this list, X Files, the Fox original series. <laughs> I mean, come on now. <laughs> it's got to be X Files. <laughs> I mean, that oh, show is like the paranormal icon <laughs> i agree 100 percent on that one i do <laughs> i 100 percent agree but like it's it, gonna be oh go ahead go ahead <laughs> i'll talk about x-files all day no like x-files just got so many people involved and into like weird stuff and like fringe stuff so um not just a show but it's kind of like a i don't know like a gateway it's, to questioning things. It op it opened the door for people who for decades have seen things but didn't want to say anything because they didn't want to sound like a fool. It opened yeah. the door for them to find people like them. And those conventions were the source of a lot of the tale, true stories we've heard of. And Fringe was amazing. Fringe was a fucking amazing show, but it's not really an alien show, so it's not in this bracket at all. But it's Yeah, I love Fringe too. Uh the ending was a little weird, but yeah, yeah. leading up to it was good. <laughs> it's the, yeah. Once you get into the whole time travel thing, it's like oh god, no, time travel fucks everything up in storylines. But the first like three or four seasons were incredible. Yeah, when it was basically X Files, but it was just all Earth based science stuff. Like that was a cool thing for the most part. And I guess it was. I mean, there, I don't know. There was kind of a time travel. The time travel thing could have been called the alien element, I guess, but I don't really think it was. But. The final matchup to see what X-Files is going to face in the next round is number 19, V, from 2009, an ABC show, or a throw-in show that I threw in, People of Earth, a TBS sitcom. I'm going to have to go V. I remember watching it when it came out, and I was really into it. And then they did the whole, like, switch channels and times and i just lost track of it mm. yeah i mean if you haven't seen people of earth i suggest you watch it people of earth is fucking hilarious it's <laughs> it's you love it it's literally about a support group for alien abductees and like no one believes them except for their support group and it literally just but there's also it also has like a storyline of like the three a representative of the three alien races like they all work together on a ship in space and like they plan abductions and stuff like that, and they try to cover up abductions, and it gets fucking hilarious. Yeah, Pat, I'll have Pat to check that out. Pat and Oswald boast of Voices of the Grey. It's freaking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to check that out. It's funny, because it shows, like, Greys, Reptilians, and uh, Norse aliens working together. <laughs> yeah, the three main ones. Exactly. And V grossed out as Ariana says, which I, I never really watched V. I, my mom liked it at one point. I remember watching it with her for a while, but I just never got into it fully. I, I 
honestly would watch the whole thing, but I'm pretty sure we only had like one or two seasons. It didn't last long. Yeah, because they did that whole like change uh, channels or times, and I hate when shows do that. It's like I go to see you at this certain time, and a bonus of all these streaming services, you don't have to switch channels yeah. and. Oh, she 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 said it grossed out because they ate live animals. Oh wow. Well, I mean, aliens would. <laughs> Why wouldn't yeah. they? Yeah. But that means you're now now going to start round two back in the other side, and your first matchup is number eighteen, Stargate Atlantis, versus number seventeen, Star Trek Voyager. Star Trek Voyager. I just like Star Trek better. Yeah. I'm sure there's going to be two camps out there that are really pissed at all these decisions, but we'll see. <laughs> and your next matchup is it was actually the two higher ranked ones from the first round. It's number 36, Alien Worlds, versus number 35, Solar Opposites. Um. After you talked about it, I'll say Solar Opposites. <laughs> it makes rainbows. <sighs> it sounds more sure. interesting to me. Uh, I mean, it's definitely more something rewatchable and something you would enjoy watching more, I'm sure. Alien World sounds like it's cool, but it sounds like it's a one-and-done thing. Like You're not going to go back and watch it again. Exactly. But, that means Solar Opposites will face the Star Trek Voyager in the quarterfinals. But the next matchup is number 34, Top Secret UFO Projects Declassified, versus number 13, Babylon 5. Uh, I'll go Babylon 5 here. Even though I haven't seen it, um, it seems like it's more geared towards stuff I would like. I should probably watch it. <laughs> It's on my long list of sci-fi shows to watch, that's for sure. But And it's going to be facing either number 12, Roswell, or number 11, Futurama. Uh, Futurama, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you're going to pick Roswell over that. And then the last matchup on this side of round two is number 10, Colony, versus number 9, The Neighbors. Uh, Colony. Like I said, I got sucked into that show, and I have to go back and finish it, but I just remember really enjoying it. Yeah, I'm, I got I got to watch it. I really do. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. But... Plus, I think the guy from uh, Lost was the main character in that, too. Oh, oh, maybe. He's in a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah, the long-haired guy. Yeah. Lost, Lost was another show that was really good until, like, season five. Yeah, I never got into Lost. I liked Heroes, but I never got into Lost. But it took me a long time to get into Heroes, though. I, it was over already by the time I watched all of it and then watched the continuation they did of it. But oh yeah, I liked Heroes a lot. It was a great, it was a great show. But that means that the other side of round two is going to start off with number nine Doctor Who versus number eight Lost in Space, the Netflix version. Was it Doctor Who? Yeah, for yeah. Doctor Who. Yeah, I'm going to have to go Doctor Who. It's just so iconic. It really is. I mean, I don't know how anybody can go against it. <laughs> it's the only show to last 50 continuous fucking years and not really stop. I mean, yeah, they took breaks here and there, but there's always movies in between. So. Yeah, and I go to Comic-Cons and stuff, and people still dress up as, as that like phone booth and stuff like that, so it's like... <laughs> oh, the, the TARDIS. You got to. Yeah. You got yeah. To. But that means what it's going to be facing is either number seven, Star Trek The Next Generation, or number six, Battlestar Galactica, which this is going to be a fight between two different sci fi nerds. Groups. <laughs> uh, I'm sure everyone knows my answer by now, but Star Trek for sure. Uh, love the show. Which means next generation is going to face Doctor Who in the quarterfinals, but oh. but that means that the next matchup is either 
Number five, Star Trek, the original series, or number four, Stargate SG-1. I feel like a broken record, but it's got to be Star Trek, the original. I mean, how could you not? <laughs> we, yeah. If that, if that didn't exist, none of these would fucking exist, for God's sake. Exactly. So. Yeah, you have Spock and Captain Kirk, and yeah. Which means that I did enjoy. Good. I did enjoy the new movie, Star Trek movies too. They were pretty oh, good. They were. They were incredible. <laughs> they were incredible. And especially yes, the uh, Into Darkness was really oh, good. they were. I mean, the first one was just the best to me. Like I seeing those characters brought back by new actors, like it was just a hilarious to see like a younger version of them, and and then to have like Shatner and uh, Nimoy come in, re can't re, re like do their roles, kind of is but it's amazing. The yeah, whole, with, with the whole Nimoy thing in the first movie and the time travel and everything, like, they made it great. Like I love that they did that. And yes, these are not fair. This is brackets are never fair because people put themselves in these positions that they can't get out. So <laughs> just the way it goes. And yeah, both were amazing. But that means the Star Trek the original series will be facing either number three, Falling Skies, or number two, The Expanse. Wait, what are the two again? Either Falling Skies or The Expanse. I'm going to go Falling Skies. I don't know. I just really liked the concept of it, like enslaved people with the alien stuff on their back. <laughs> oh, it, it was an amazing show. And I mean, it was just, to me, it's the most realistic thing that could ever be portrayed for if aliens actually do invade Earth. Like, that is the most realistic thing that's going to happen. It's right there. It's got all... I mean, we most like we most likely were their slaves at one point in history anyway, and we will be again probably. Like it's just they're more scientifically advanced. That's the way it goes in life. Like you just yeah. thinking, it's not like I hate like more of the worlds, yeah, they're not gonna get sick from the average cold and just die. That does not it's not the way life works. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. <laughs> but that means your final matchup in round two is the number one ranked X Files versus number nineteen V the two thousand nine series. Oh, there's no contest. Uh, X Files, hundred percent. Which means X Files moves on into the finals for the little short bottom half of this bracket. And I did like the uh, X Files reboot mini series that they did. That was good too. Oh, it was amazing. Seeing Fox mold or dance to country music was one of the greatest things ever. <laughs> yes. And and that one monster of the week they did where it was a monster who would turn human once a month at the full moon. And <laughs> that that was priceless. That was because the whole time you think it's like the reverse, like normal way. And then like they finally, finally at the end, like Fox explains what like to him what's going on. And it's just like, what? He turns into a human <laughs> once a month. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. But uh, I, I loved it. It, it, was, it would never be as good as the original run. But of course, it's not. No, no. <laughs> but that means you're now in the quarterfinals. So there literally is or like ten around 10 matchups left at this point. And the first one you got to deal with is number 17, Star Trek Voyager. Versus number 35, Solar Opposites. <laughs> Broken record again. I have to go Star Trek. Yeah, I knew that was going to go that way, so I'm not. <laughs> it's hard when there's so many of the same show. Oh, yeah. I mean, they've, been, they've been dominating the sci-fi world for 50, 60 years now. So Yeah. <laughs> and that means that Star Trek Voyager is going to be facing... Either Babylon 5 at number 13 or Futurama at number 11. Uh, I'll have to go Futurama. Oh, just because I've watched it so much over the years. Uh, like, I can constantly go back to it and watch it, and it's cool. <laughs> oh, it's got, it's got so much rewatchability, just like all the Fox animated shows. 
Yeah, that and Simpsons. I can always go if I just want to watch something quick before bed or something. And <laughs> yeah, but, uh, well, watch an episode, of Future, watch an episode of Futurama or two, King of the Hill or two, and just pass out while watching it. That's what I used to do all the time. But yeah, the other side of the quarterfinals is going to start off with number nine, Doctor Who versus number seven, Star Trek: The Next Generation. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get so much hate. <laughs> I have to go next generation just because I grew up watching it and um, I'm not a Trekkie, but I guess I kind of close to it. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be a bunch of movie and throwing their freaking cosmic screwdrivers at you. So yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Let me hide in the TARDIS or whatever. <laughs> hey, it's bigger on the inside. <laughs> but your last matchup in the quarterfinals is he was going to face next gen next generation is going to be either number five, Star Trek, the original series, or number three, Falling Skies. And she's amazed you didn't pick Doctor Who. Yeah, I knew I would get hate from that. I'm sorry. I respect oh. Doctor Who, but it's which just way you, things. Which, which way you go on this one is really going to get your hate because uh, the match you're going to, you might create might be a Trekkie's worst nightmare. What are the two again for this one? Star Trek, the original series, or Falling Skies? Oh, my gosh. I mean, how can I pick Falling Skies? I can't. I got to pick the original Star Trek. Oh, there's going to be some heat in the semifinals. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to hate myself after this. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, for your four semifinals in the top of this bracket, Three out of four are Star Trek shows. Oh, geez. So you're in I apologize. It's just my thing. Oh, apologize to yourself because you're going to need to. But it's the first matchup in the semifinals is number 17, Star Trek Voyager versus number 11, Futurama. I'm going to go Futurama here, actually. I don't know. I just really like the cartoon. It's it's a fun, fun time. Futurama could make it to the grand finale of this whole thing, and it would make me mad. And winning, <laughs> depending on what it's against, could. But it'd have to be against a couple certain things if it was going to lose. But that means that the other side of the semifinals for the top are number seven, Star Trek The Next Generation, or number five, Star Trek The Original Series. Um, gosh, this is this is where you're going to be dividing the Trekkies between old school and new school. Yeah, yeah, and I want to say the next gen because I grew up watching it, but I think I'm going to go to original just because it's the original, and next generation wouldn't exist without Captain. Very Kirk. true. <laughs> uh, very true. I mean, there would be no Picard without Kirk. That's for damn sure. But yeah, well. That means you got two final matchups left, plus two other additional ones. But let's start the first finals matchup on the bottom here. And it's either going to be number 10, Colony, or number one, X-Files. X-Files all the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just recently watched through, like, most of them. I I... But I that's another one. There's so many. It's like I know it's it's over 200 episodes. It's freaking massive, and two movies. So it's just. But all right, <laughs> that means X Files is gonna face one of these two for the grand finale, and it's either number 11 Futurama or number five Star Trek the original series. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one's tough. Oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's gonna be. <laughs> the grand ones are even, be even tougher. I'm gonna go original Star Trek here. I love Futurama, but I mean, the pioneer of sci-fi, Star Trek. <laughs> Which means we're gonna do your third and fourth place matchup first to save you the agony of the finals for a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> The third and fourth place matchup, 
maybe Agni as well, because it's number 10 Colony versus number 11 Futurama. Futurama, for sure. Oh, I love Colony, but Futurama is just the replayability is top notch. Yeah, it is, and I'm I'm happy I got third at least in this. I can't be too mad at losing out to the two one to, to both X Files and Star Trek. I can't be mad at that. They it wouldn't <laughs> exist without both of those. So, so your finals, of course, is X Files at number one or Star Trek at number five. Um, I'm gonna go X Files here. Um. Like I said, I'm really into UFOs, alien abductions, alien contact. So X-Files, it's a major proponent of the show. I like the whole Scully getting uh, impregnated or whatever <laughs> storyline thing. Um, so, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't blame you. X-Files is fucking amazing. It's one of the reasons I got into the paranormal more more than that already was, but I mean, geez. That means that your top four were Colony at fourth place from Sci-Fi, Futurama from Fox at third place, Star Trek, the original series from NBC at second place, and X-Files from Fox at first place, which means Fox basically won this bracket. So, <laughs> Hey, what do you say? Fox makes good shows. So, <laughs> oh, oh, they do. They do. Oh, they make good shows that last forever or they make crappy shows that last a season that's basically the way it yeah is. yeah <laughs> and um but, x files yeah if it wasn't for x files i probably wouldn't have my podcast so i'm glad it, uh one number one x files opened up a lot of fucking doors for a lot of freaking people that's for damn sure it may it opened up portals for all of us to believe in things we didn't believe in before so or to believe in things we thought we knew existed but we didn't want to say shit so and I remember growing up, uh, always wanting to be Fox Mulder. <laughs> and I was like, that was like my dream. I remember watching the series for the first time on Netflix in my 20s and saying, I want to be Fox Mulder. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, it's always a dream. I'm, it's still my dream to be Fox Mulder. But, yeah, I just have the number one paranormal podcast under the science category on Good Pod. So, I'll take that. <laughs> that's as close as I'm getting to Fox Mulder. I'll fucking take it. But... Actually, I think I just got moved down to number two. God damn, I'm uh, but I'm working on getting um, back up there. Yeah, running running my uh, successful podcast is the closest I'll probably get <laughs> to being mm -hmm. Fox Mulder. And that's a good segue, because where can they find your successful podcast? Uh, yeah, my podcast, What If They're Wrong, uh, Paranormal Podcast, is on every platform that streams podcasts. And uh, you can also go to www.whatifpod.com. On there, I have some pictures of guests. Some guests don't like to be seen, but most of the guests I have pictures of. And um, yeah, you can contact me through there or what if they're wrong at gmail.com. And hopefully, you check out the show. And I cover a wide range of topics aliens, Bigfoot, ghosts. Mandela effects, conspiracies, you name it. It's pretty much X Files in podcast form. And um, yeah, that's where you can find me. Boy, do you talk about inbred hillbillies who leave their mother underneath the bed? That's the question. <laughs> that is probably the most disturbing, iconic show of that I, show. That's the episode. Yeah. I mean, I literally went on a uh, t uh, forensic TV breakdown episode of one of my favorite podcasts, and I, that, they asked me to bring an episode of a TV show I like, and I picked that one. And <laughs> and actually, we just talked about a horror movie on, the, on this show as well on one of the previous records I did, where that basically is the movie version of that episode. So it's creepy. I mean, that show is just creepy and yeah, nightmares. Exactly, nightmares. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, that X Files won, and I'm not sad about my picks. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be either. Never am. But folks, check out Jeremiah's show. Definitely do. You might see. You might hear a familiar voice in there for a few episodes. 
And you might see a familiar picture on his website if you go there. I'm just saying. I'm pretty sure I gave it to him. I don't know. It was a long. <laughs> it was it was a long time ago at this point, but it was probably hell. It was almost two years ago at this point, probably. But you could you all know where you can find me. I'm not going through it all again. Check the outro if you're new. If you're new, welcome. Or if you're just forgetful, stop being forgetful. But other than that, you know where to find me. Check out the outro to find me. And or just follow where this is streaming, and you'll find me that way as well. And check out Jeremiah next week when he does the 34 top Rotten Tomato horror movies. <laughs> we get to say fuck you to Rotten Tomatoes next week. Trust me, we will. <laughs> <laughs> but until next week, well, I'll be back for then. But until next week, we will see you then. Have a good one. Bye.